Hey guys, welcome back to the Phoenix 1.3 GraphQL tutorial. My name is Tensor. In the last tutorial, we set up our update user. We made it so that we had CRUD for all of our posts. In this tutorial, we're going to set up authentication via JWTs. So let's get started. There are a couple different strategies for authenticating with a GraphQL API endpoint. We can either authenticate all requests and require all incoming GraphQL requests to have a valid JWT, or we can authenticate on an operation by operation basis. We're going to do the latter in this tutorial because the former is fairly simple. So the first thing we want to do is create a plug that all of our requests to our API will have to go through. And if a request has a valid JWT in the authorization header, we will add the current user's information to the absinthe context property of the connection so that it can be passed into our resolver function. If there is not a valid JWT in the request, no user will be added to the connection and we will create multiple resolver functions to pattern match and handle the cases when a request is authenticated or not. We need to create a new folder inside a graphical web. We'll call it plug and inside of it we'll create a file called context. .ex, and this module will be simply called graphicalweb.context. We want to give this the behavior of a plug, and then we want to import plug.con and import ecto.query, specifically the where function. Then we'll alias graphical repo and graphical accounts user. Like all plugs, this module defines two callback functions, init and call. Init does exactly what you think it would, and the call function runs on the connection and then adds a context to the connection if a user is found, or returns a connection without adding a context. In order for this to work properly, Guardian will need to have loaded the current user into the connection. We can make this happen by adding a couple of Guardian plugs to the new pipeline in our router, or we can just do it with our context functions in here, like our build context and our authorize. So our call function here creates a context using our build context function, and then we use this put private function to make everything private, and this takes our connection and it points towards absent, and then on the context we add our context. This build context function builds a context using a with block and we take bearer and we concatenate it with our token and we check to see if it's the same token that we're passing through the connection and if it is we get back the current user and in which case we call authorize. Authorize then runs through our user and if it finds a token that matches with our token then it goes into our repository and it gets out our user. Otherwise it passes back nil and an error that says invalid authentication token and then back up into build context. After the authorize is run, it takes the current user and puts it into a current user map, which goes into our request. Otherwise, it will just pass back nothing. Now, before we add our new plug to our router, we want to make a migration to our users table inside of our Postgres database. I'll call this migration add token to users. And inside of our change function, we just want to alter our table users and add a token field to it that is a string. That way, we can actually store the tokens inside of our database. Then we actually want to go into our user scheme and actually add the token field as a string and we'll make a new change set called store token change set and this will take in our user and our params and it will specifically look for our token and then it will validate the token and then we have our put password hash but we don't really care about that in this particular change set after migrating our database we want to edit our router file we want to create a new pipeline with our context on it so this will automatically add our context plug to our request and then we'll create a new scope on api and this will pipe through our GraphQL pipeline, which means our context, and we'll forward to index with absinthe.plug, and then we'll point towards our graphical schema. And we want to leave open our graphical schema so that we can still gain access to the back end of our GraphQL node without having to worry about authenticating every single time. Now, if this was a production ready application, you would either put this on a very hidden node or you would just remove it altogether. But because this is not production ready, we're not worried about that right now. We can spin up our server and actually go back into our GraphQL user interface and we can still run post title and body easily get them out of our database and that's because we're pointing to this URL which is localhost graphical instead of localhost API now this should still work and it does and that's because we haven't implemented the logic that will make it so that we need to have a token to access this content we'll go inside our post resolver module and we'll alias our graphical posts post and our graphical repo now post post is our uh, context 
list. And the repo is obviously our repository. And then we'll edit our all functions so that they appropriately deal with our context. So you can see here that rather than ignoring our arguments and our info, we're looking at our info map and we're pulling out of context, current user, the user ID, and then we're saying post equal post where post has a user ID of ID. And then we pull out all of the posts that are associated with that particular ID. And then we put all the posts into a tuple of OK and posts. And then we have a second all function and this will pattern match. So if we do not have a context, current user ID, then we'll pattern match with this particular function, which will return error not authorized. And if we jump back into our GraphQL UI, you can see that when we query our posts and the title and body, we get back not authorized and data post null. All right, so now let's make it so that we can log in and out of our application. GraphQL types are fairly flexible and they can represent actual persisted data as well as virtual and temporary data. We're going to create a virtual type that represents a session so that we can return a JWT to the user after a successful login. Okay, so let's make it so that we can log in. We'll make a field login. This will be type user. It'll take in an email, which will be a non-null string and a password, which will also be a non-null string. And this will point at graphical user resolver login. This will be a RD2 function. Before we create our login function, however, we want to come into our graphical accounts user module, alias graphical.repo, and then create two functions, one called authenticate and the other one called check password. The authenticate function looks up a user with the provided params, which will be our email and password. And then it uses the check password function to ensure that the provided password matches the hash password stored to the user. So we use this come on in bcrypt check password, and this will return and true or false based on whether or not the hash password and the password that we passed in are the same after they go through our algorithm. In our user resolver, we want to add our login function and we'll use a with block and we'll say graphical accounts user authentication. We'll pass in the params. This will give us back our user and then we'll use our graphical guardian encode and sign. Passing in the user, this will give us back our token which we will then pass into our store user function, which is in graphical accounts. And this will pass back okay. So this will put our token into our database. And then we'll pass back our token inside of a map. Our store user function is fairly basic. It's just like our update user function. We just take our user and then we call our store token change set on our token, which puts it into our database and then we update our repository. Oh, and also make sure you have the appropriate amount of ends for your login function. I missed an end here, so it was throwing an error. Okay, so now that we have our login function, let's try to log in a user. All right, so now we can log in our user with our mutation. We say mutation login user, and we put in our login with email test at example.com and password at password, and this will pass back the ID. And if we hit play, you'll see here that this will log in, but it will also give us ID of null, and it won't give us the token either. We can, however, get the token from inside of our command line. However, our command line is not our API, which means that our token is not being exposed completely through our API. So we need to to fix that. Okay, so to make it so that we can see our token, we want to create an object called session, and this will have a field of token, which is a string. Then inside of our schema for login, instead of having it be type user, we make it into type session. And then we still have our arguments as email and password, which are both non-null strings. And we still resolve to user resolver login too. This object session now is basically a virtual GraphQL type that we created just as a go-between so that we can expose the token on our API endpoint. So unlike the other fields from our other objects, user and post, this is something that we do not necessarily need to have stored inside of our database. Now when we run a mutation on login user, we get our entire token back from this API. And we can paste the token into our header like this. So our name value will be authorization, and then our value value will be the word bearer with a space and then our token. And if you hit okay, then you'll see here that it will add that to our header. Now while pointing at localhost 4000 backslash API, if you go and you query the posts with the title on the body, you'll only get the posts that are connected to the user that you logged in with. If we were using a front end to consume this API, we would be storing this JWT in either local storage or in a cookie. And then we'd send it with every subsequent request to the API. In this case, we just put it into our UI like this and it allows us to query like we would if we were using just a front end.
Okay, so I know we only just exposed our read functionality to our authentication and we can still technically create, update, and delete posts without logging in. It really wouldn't be all that difficult for us to implement checks to see if we have a context map in all of these other functions. All we'd have to do is replace our info with our context map and then we just have to look and see if there is an ID or not. And if there is an ID, then we try to check and see if the posts that we're pulling out of the database have that user ID associated with them. Alright guys, well I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to subscribe and like. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you disliked it, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night.